I'm Deborah Lupien, the Answer Diva of Akasha Unleashed. Welcome to Chatting with Your Akashic Guides. We are just going to have fun and see what comes through. Feel free to ask any questions at all. Um, there's nobody on the phone right now, but if somebody shows up, we'll explain the directions for them. Um, I'm going to mute you only because we get background noise that bothers people on the recording. So when you want to ask a question, you raise your hand. And you do that by turning on the chat, which should be at the bottom of your screen. Okay, I think the chat is on. But if I raise my hand like that, <laughs> I'll do that because the chat's not working or something. <laughs> okay, that's fine. That works for me. Um, but the chat will come up and it will show that your hand is raised so that I'll, I'll know that you want to speak in case I don't see you on the screen. Because if, if I'm channeling, I'll have my eyes closed and I won't see anyway. Oh, okay. So. so. So then you would unmute us to ask the question and then mute us again? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so we'll just go back and forth. Because last time I tried leaving everybody unmuted, it got pretty noisy in the background. Yes. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out with a little grounding exercise just so that we're all in the right energetic space before we go in and contact your guides. So just sit back and relax. Take a couple of deep breaths. Exhale fully. And just allow any stress, shoulders, your neck, just let that flow down, down your body, all the way past your legs, your ankles. Let it go out through the bottoms of your feet and into the earth. Just allow it all to wash away until your body just feels so light as if you could float away. And now with your eyes still closed, look up and see a white column of light descending towards you from the heavenlies. It's beautiful and sparkling, and it's coming closer and closer. And as it reaches your energy body, it comes right in, and it might feel a little warm and tingly. And then it enters through your crown chakra, top of your head. And it's warm. It ignites your senses. You can feel it in your nerve endings going all the way down through your body and exiting out your feet until you are now firmly grounded between heaven and earth, safe in this space, ready to receive whatever wisdom your guides want to share with you on this day. Just allow that to process through your body for a moment. You might feel it tingling in your fingers and in your toes. You might even feel it racing through your brain as neurons are ignited in preparation for the messages that will come. And take a couple more deep breaths. And when you're ready, open your eyes. Awesome. So, I don't know about you, I'm feeling pretty tingly and ready to go. Uh -huh. Good energy here. Awesome. So, Art, you got here first. How would you like to start? What's your question? Oh, um, I would like to open it to whatever my guides feel is important for me to know because what I want them to tell me what they've been waiting to tell me for a long time. And because I want nothing more than to 
spread the knowledge that I have accumulated to help speed up the spiritual speed up that's already taking place. It needs to go faster. And I want to see us, I want to see the world rise in consciousness together. Okay. Say your name for me so I get it Art, right. Yeah, Art Drentlau, D-R-E-N-T-L-A-U. Drentlau, okay. Give me just a moment. I'll just connect with your guides. And then when I start getting something, I'll speak and share with you whatever I see, hear, or feel. This is interesting. I'm seeing the door to your archive as this really deep purple, so it's almost a charcoal. And on it is what looks like a Star of David. Is that meaningful to you? Yeah, because I, I think I have a message that connects the Jewish religion with the Christian religion. Okay. Oh, so the purple and the Star of David would match up. Okay, that makes sense. It was kind of a strange one. I haven't seen one like that before. And it, it looks like it was burnt in, you know, like charcoal burnt into the wood. The stuff. Mm. Very interesting. So it has kind of this mysterious feeling to it. So I'm just waiting to see if it will open on its own or. Yeah, it, this is funny. You know, those doors that you have to push and they kind of click open. Yeah. It's that kind of a door, which I've never seen before. So this is interesting. Well, every, every time I close my eyes, I do see purple. Okay. So that's validation for you, Art. And usually what happens in these messages is that they will share something to validate for you so that you can trust the rest of the message. So that's the reason for it. So I didn't touch it. It did this itself, but it did like that pop, and I heard the click. And so the door is now slowly swinging open. And you know what's weirder? It's creaking. It needs its hinges oiled. Yeah, I, I, because that's exactly what I was thinking, that it's going to creak when you open it. <laughs> yeah, so there's, I don't know if you're taking notes, but you'll get this on the, the video. There's some symbolism with that creaking. I don't know what it means yet. Maybe you do, um, but we'll, we'll see what unfolds, because that's really interesting. So as it's opening, I'm seeing darkness inside, and there's like, a spotlight that's beaming down and it almost looks like it's from a helicopter so it's it's because it's like it's moving and now I can hear the chopper blades faintly but I can hear them and this this light is like you know moving around like it's from a helicopter searching for something on the ground hmm well I did exercises in the Navy where helicopters were called in in, in a rescue situation. This was very special training that was done to rescue pilots that were downed in Vietnam. And we played the role of aggressors. And we ran a simulated prisoner of war camp that these guys went through. And then we would have these special exercises where someone would jump out of a plane. And in one of those, uh, I snuck up and we had blanks in the gun and I was able to shoot the pilot down from being rescued and the, and the helicopter, which was part of the, you know, the exercise that they did to try and, you know, perf make their training better. Okay. So it has meaning. That's good. So I'm just waiting to see what comes next because I'm just still seeing the same thing. It's just paused there. So it paused for you to speak, which is really a cool thing that they can do. So I can hear the chopper blades. Are, they're soft, though. And it looks like they're searching for something because, it's, as I said, it's very dark in there. I'm starting to see a little bit of, of a rocky terrain. Not hugely rocky, but, you know, there are some rocks. And it looks like a gravel road. Yes, that's exactly right. That's where we were. Okay. And this is where I, I was, got the uh, confounding feeling 
as to how easy it was to brainwash people in a simulated situation. And that was part of me wanting to figure out how the mind works because most of the world has been brainwashed and I want to stop the brainwashing because we are far more than we have come to believe. Yes, that's absolutely true. All of us are, regardless of brainwashing. Exactly. We're just, as, as humanity, we're awakening more to our true selves. Our souls are coming more to the forefront as our egos are taking a step back. Yes, exactly. So let's see if they have anything for you along the lines of what you're asking about. Oh, so now I'm seeing, you know how when you do a video and they have that slide where one frame slides away and the next comes in? So it's like, okay, that's the old, that's being wiped away. Just, it slid right across. I don't know if it's meaningful, but it went right to left. Well, the right to left wasn't meaningful, but I, I do want to switch away to a different, to a different subject. Okay. And that has to do with uh, a technology that we are developing that's supposed to be impossible, but it's not impossible. And other people have been killed, literally, for trying to bring this technology to the public. And my associate and I don't want to be killed. We want to bring it to the public. And we know that it's possible because the government is hiding this. But what we have is much more, uh, is inexpensive to make compared to what the government is hiding from us. And it's an ethereous government. It's not an, an acknowledged government, which, yeah. which I've told you about. Mm -hmm. And it's- So while you were speaking, the words just came, it's not impossible. And of course you know that, or you wouldn't be continuing to pursue it. But what they're reminding me to share with you is that if you focus on the fear of being killed, you will attract that to you. So put yeah, that in your mind. That's way in the background right now, because I know where to go to get the protection that we need with a, with a highly spiritual person. And it came to the forefront because one of our investors is concerned about that but if we do the right things then everything will be fine and we will be we will be able to bring this forward well you know if you're on the path of your soul purpose which it feels like you are and you're moving forward in alignment with who you are with your gifts and your purpose then unless your soul is ready to depart this earth you won't be an energetic match for death so it doesn't matter what's going on around you. What matters is going on inside you. Yeah, I'm not planning on leaving for a long time. So having that clarity of purpose and just shut that other stuff out. Don't let it come in because you don't want to dance with it. You don't want to make it feel comfortable to hang around you. So it's like going through life with blinders, which normally would be a bad thing. But in this case, it's simply staying on track for your purpose and not allowing those outside forces to distract you and get you off course, because that's what they're trying to do. They're the forces of chaos. They're trying to come in and upset your apple cart and get you off your purpose in your path. Right. So you just keep on doing what you know you need to do. Keep moving forward. And should you get to a place where you feel doubt, because I'm feeling in your gut, I'm feeling a little doubt swirling around there. And that's perfectly normal and natural to be expected because you're stepping out in a very powerful way and you're paving new ground. So of course there would be some doubt and a little concern because you don't know what's out there on the path. It's all swirling and dense and unknown. You have intentions, but other factors do come into play that interact and can impact your intentions. But just know it doesn't matter about those outside forces because as long as you stay on your path and you keep moving forward, those outside forces can't really impact you. That's an illusion. Does that make sense?
Art? Oh, it's frozen. Are you still active, Allison? Oh, I see you moving, so Art's frozen. Hopefully he'll come back in a moment. Art, if you can hear me, maybe you want to disconnect and reconnect and see if that resets. Oh, I think he did it. Okay. So it's just you and me now, Allison. While we wait for Art, what would you like to ask? Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you fine. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. I, although I'm an animal communicator, I'm just getting kind of started learning about what, what you're doing, right? Um, I believe I have a lot of animal guides around me, with me. Uh, I guess my question would be, we're considering a move back to Arizona. And uh, just, just a sec. Hi, Mark. Welcome. Glad you made it. Go ahead, Allison. Uh -huh. uh, just wanted to know, am I on the right path with exploring that option? With exploring moving? Because I'm sorry. I got yes, I'm sorry. With exploring the option of moving, of moving to Arizona. Okay. It's funny you say that because I have a student in a course that I've been teaching who felt led to move. And then it was like all hell broke loose and things weren't working the way she thought they should. And now she's very confused. So what I get, uh -huh. it's, it's just an interesting thread there. I don't know if it's connected to you, but it, it came up. So I, I'm sharing it. But uh -huh. I get this feeling like for this move, there's a lot of doubt and a lot of questions. And what they're saying is, Allison, go into your solar plexus. Do some meditation. In your solar plexus, how do you feel about this? Do you feel excited about it? Does it feel like it's a brand new vista opening for you? Or is it really scary? Okay. Do you have a sense for which way it is right oh, now? Oh, it's really exciting. I, I grew up in Tucson. And I've been wanting to get back there, I think, for about a good seven years and I'm feeling a very strong energetic pull and I've been ignoring it for a long time just saying it's impossible this is a crazy idea how could we do this how could we move six dogs two horses two goats cat home everything how do we do that you know businesses and that type of a thing but that pull is getting stronger and stronger and stronger to the point where I can no longer ignore it and we have an opportunity to do the business that I'm doing here I have two businesses, but uh, the, my main publishing business, I have the opportunity to do that in Tucson and then also grow my animal communication business there as well. But it's a big, it's a big kind of a scary thing too. And yeah. I want to make sure that I, if I'm pursuing this, that I'm, that I'm being led in the right way. Yes. Did you say that you read my book? I'm, I'm having a memory that you had said that online somewhere. No, not yet. I just, okay. ha I just have it on my Kindle now and it's, yes, it's okay. on my, on my list. There's a whole <laughs> section in there that talks about how we make choices. So oh, okay. skip ahead at least and get that part. Cause that, okay. is for you. but essentially okay. what it is, is that when we make choices, we have been in the mode of doing it from our ego. We think our way through choices. And when we do that, ego gets in the way because ego says, hey, I want to keep you safe until you get to death. I don't want you to step out and do anything that's exciting and, and risky and, you know, might cause harm to you. Right. I want to keep you safe, Allison. Yep, yep. It keeps you from growing and expanding. Yes. So what universe says is, no, Allison, you were built to think, to, I'm sorry, to feel your way through decisions. So go to your solar plexus. Okay. Uh -huh. Feel it. Focus on it. If it makes you feel good and excited, then you know that's the answer, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. Because that's connecting with your soul and that's telling you where you want to go. And you just shared with us that this is what you've been desiring. So you've been throwing out those rockets of desire as Abraham. Oh, yeah. Say, <laughs> for this. So now the opportunity is coming and it's a little scary because it's a big change, but mm -hmm. Allison, you ask for it. 
Go do I know. it. <laughs> I know. Exactly. <laughs> right? And here it is. And now I'm thinking, oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh-huh. But you know, if, if it's not scary, then you're not growing. Yes, exactly. And you know, being an entrepreneur, it's scary all the time. You're right. always stepping out of your comfort zone. So that's actually something you're kind of used to. Now you just have to apply it to these big life decisions. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Does that help? It does, it does. Thank you. Yes. You're welcome. I mean, do you feel and they, and most of my guides are animals or people or both? Let me just take a moment and look. Thank you. That's your name, okay. Well, there's a lot of people because your Akashic guides are what they appear in a human form. So we would say they're people, but they're souls, they're entities. Um, and yeah, I'm seeing in your record, there's like this line of, of animals. A lot of cats are showing up in the front of the line. So the cats are coming forward really strongly. And there are some dogs there. And I even see some goats. And further back, I see an elephant. Wow. So there's a lot of, of animal energy there for you. And then behind them are lined up these legions of your guides that are in your record. So for you, Allison, there are as many there as you choose, and you can ask for more if you want more. So they're all accessible to you. And I think that they're showing me all these different animals because they want you to know that when you're connecting, let's say with an elephant, and that's a new experience for you, know that there is a like energy in your records that you can connect with that will help you to do a better job in connecting with the one here that you're trying to connect with. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, I've got goosebumps all over and that's always my huge on target yeah. sign. Yes, and it's beautiful to bring that into my animal communication work. Yes. Yeah. yeah thank so you. that's why they showed me all those animals because they wanted you to feel confident that you can do it. And it doesn't matter what kind of animal, it doesn't right. matter if it's in spirit or if it's, you know, here in the third dimension, you mm -hmm. can contact them just as easily. Yeah, exactly. And so if I've done some animal communication myself, and I know that doubt that comes in because there are so many unknowns and it's really hard to trust the message. So I believe they're showing you that like for like animal because they want you to know when you connect with the one for your client, call in the one from your records, because that will help you to make a stronger connection. And I found when I get the information from the Akasha, as opposed to just doing a direct animal connection, I get so much more. Wow. I, okay. feel it, I feel the truth of it. So that may be something you want to do, when you connect with an animal, you can go into the Akashic record of the person and ask oh. the animal to come forward. Oh. So that way you're getting both, right? Uh huh. Okay. Experiment with that. I think you yeah. might have a fuller experience that okay. will serve you and your clients. Oh, how interesting. Okay, great, thank you. You're welcome. So we'll come back around in case there's more questions. We have plenty of time. So I'm gonna mute you now, Allison. And Art, I don't know if you heard the, all the message that came through for you or not. Uh, it will be on the, um, the recording. Did okay, yeah. All of a sudden, my computer decided it wanted to shut down on its own, and it shut down and came back on. So, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you just froze, which you did again now. So, there's probably it means your internet is a little unstable. That's usually what that means. So I'm gonna pop over to Mark and see if he has a question, and then we'll come back around and, and see what everybody else has got. So Mark, I just unmuted you. Thank you for hanging in and, and connecting with us. You, you're welcome, it was a pleasure to meet you last night. Um, I don't have a question right now. Can you come back to me? I'll try to think of one. When, Absolutely. Uh, when you yeah. get back. And you know, it doesn't okay. have to be specific. You can just ask for whatever message your guides wanna share with you. Oh, okay. Well, let me ask that. Okay. <laughs> what, what, what is the message that's, that's there for right now for me? You got it. Yeah, let's do that. And okay. I, I might have a specific one later. Sure. So I'm just going to take a moment. That's a good start. Tell me how you pronounce your last name. Lichty, L-I-C-H-T-Y. 
I thought so, but I want to be sure. I like to say the names correctly when I go to your yeah. record. Yeah. I'm seeing this white, sparkly white, like it's got little teeny tiny stars in it twinkling, and beside it is yellow, and it's kind of, um, it's almost a lemon yellow, but it's not as bright as a lemon yellow. It's a little muted. And they're both together, both of these, almost like two colored sheets. And they both have these little twinkly stars. So unless those colors have meaning for you, I would think it's probably referring to your solar plexus, because that would be the yellow chakra. So let's just see what comes from that. It's a very light energy. It's a very um, positive energy is how it feels. Very welcoming. Oh, and so now there's a breeze coming through and they're like veils or curtains and they're, they're almost a chiffon like fabric. And so they're just wafting in the breeze very gently. And it's a beckoning feeling. So it's inviting me to come in. So I'm stepping in between those two curtains, I guess they would be. And inside I'm hearing music and it's, it's kind of an Indian sounding music. It's like um, string, some kind of a string instrument. Not a guitar, but something in between a guitar and, um, I don't know, I can't think of the name of the instrument, but it's, it's that low strumming sound in the background and it's very light so it's like a meditative feeling and maybe that's what this is about so it's a very quiet peaceful space and that strumming sound is very hypnotic and just draws you in and so you just want to settle down into these deep cushions and just heave a big sigh of relief and relax and let the cares of the world just go away from you and I, there's a little bit of an incense smell going on. I think it's a sandalwood. Yeah, so it's like you've, you've entered this meditation zen, den, rather, in a zen place. <laughs> so maybe it's like, um, I don't know, Tibet or something. It just has that very um, strong, positive feeling to it. Like, a lot of people have been in this space and they have done some really powerful soul work. And all of that energy is in this room. But it's not, you know, high, excited energy. It's quiet and deep and strong and zen. Very zen feeling. And so now from off to the back left comes this dancing girl. She's dressed in kind of like... A, a harem outfit and she's doing you know like a belly dancing kind of routine very quiet and gentle because it's keeping the energy of the space in that zen place so it's just it's almost like an accoutrement to the experience so she comes in and she's doing her undulations around the room very quietly and she has this energy that she's so light she could almost lift off of her feet is this making any sense to you mark no, the um, I I I meditate, and uh, so uh, some of that that you described might might be. Uh, oh, you know bad. what it is. As you started speaking, I got more of a picture. She yeah. is there, and she is like stroking the tendrils in your brain to help you expand and open up to more. Mm -hmm. that's what she's there for that's why mm -hmm. she has that very quiet light presence she's mm -hmm. there to help you peel away the layers of resistance so that you mm -hmm. can go deeper and get to where you were trying to go mm -hmm. and it's like she's almost massaging the brain not mm -hmm. your head but literally the brain it's like her fingers are going into your brain mm -hmm. and just caressing and stroking the mm -hmm. neural pathways to help open opening them up Mm -hmm. it's like there's a little bit of sludge in there and so she's just helping it to get freed up so that you can get deeper and achieve whatever goal it is that you were trying to achieve does that make sense 
Mm -hmm. Okay. Because now it got quiet and she disappeared. Mm -hmm. And it's just dark. And I'm seeing you sitting there, cross-legged, very calm. And you sit very straight. You have mm -hmm. very good posture in, in this vision, I see. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's important, but mm -hmm. that's just there as an observation. And now I'm hearing that kind of undulating music like you would hear, um, you know, in the tents of the sheiks. Mm. And it's, it's not, a, the strumming is there, but it's in the background. Now it's more like one of those horns, almost yeah. like um, a snake charmer's horns, that kind of a sound. So it's beckoning again. Remember we were beckoned as we first came in. And so now it's beckoning again. So to me, that means that, okay, you've been in this space and now it's time to get up and move to the next place. So let's see where that next place is. So we're going now towards the back of the room where the dancer came from. And the lighting is very low, so I'm not seeing very much at the moment, but I can see just enough to get back to that space. So I'm going back towards that opening. Oh, and as I get back there, there's like this velvet black curtain. And so I push the curtain aside and step out into, wow, bright, piercing light. That's kind of a little blinding after the dark that we were just in. And it's so pure and white. It's, it's, it's in the heavenlies. It's like it's in another dimension. So it's like we've gone to the fifth dimension or, or even higher. And it's that bright white that people associate with when you get to the pearly gates or something. So it's very white and pure and just that's all there is right now. It's just that whiteness everywhere. And so I'm just waiting to see, is someone coming? Why are we here? So I'm seeing this angel coming forth, but this is the funny thing. This angel has a real sense of humor because and I can't tell if it's a she or he, so it's a she, he. There's a, a garland of Christmas tinsel in gold around the head and kind of a crooked halo. And it, it, this is like a wise cracking angel. I can tell just by the way she, he is walking. And, you know, got the robe hiked up on one side and just this posture and this manner of movement that just conveys to you that this individual this the soul has a lot of humor and lightening up things and saying you know it's like hey you know you're all too serious you got to lighten up and laugh because life is supposed to be fun and there's a lot of dimension of fun that's lacking in your life collectively your life i don't know if they're telling you that specifically mark but perhaps because it is your record and so oh my gosh Curly golden hair with beard stubble. So I guess it's a he. And I'm hearing like jumping Jehoshaphat. You know, it's, it's that irreverent kind of energy. Don't know what this angel is about yet, but coming closer to us. So I suppose we're going to get something soon. And if you want to ask anything, you can, Mark, because I can pause. Oh my gosh. So he's now on tiptoe and he's dancing around you like a ballerina on point, which is so absurd that you just want to go into belly laughs because the spectacle of this bearded, stubble bearded, kind of chubby angel with the tinsel garland doing a ballet around you, it, it, it's so ridiculous and hilarious. And just more of that feeling of irreverence. So do you feel like you need to lighten up? Are you too no, definitely, definitely, yeah. Okay, that's, so that's, yes. that's why. So yeah. he's like, he's trying to poke fun at you and get you to just laugh and play. Yeah. Because now he's, he's like holding his hands out to you and saying, you know, come yeah. on. And he's trying to invite you to go into that, that thing yeah. where you hold hands with somebody and you spin around and around mm -hmm. and lean back and you spin. Mm -hmm. so he's inviting you to play. And now I'm, I'm hearing one of these like cartoon songs and it, it's like uh, from a Disney movie and it's that one that's like, oh, I don't even know if I can hum it for you. 
da 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 that probably makes no sense. It, it's just a very light, uh, humorous kind of music that they play whenever the characters are going to get into mischief. It's that kind of a sound. So that's going on, and I'm seeing like some clover leaves popping up here and there, and some little rabbits. And so it's a very whimsical scene, but still a lot of white around us. So it's like going into this pure space and being open to receive whatever comes. That's what it's feeling like. And having a feeling of excitement in your heart for what's going to come. Oh, that's what it's about, Mark. It's a willingness to step forward without knowing, but trusting that whatever comes is going to be delicious and you're going to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? That does, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you want to ask anything about that? Mm. No, no, I, I'm good with what you said. Okay, because that's kind of fading. I think that's all they have to share for the moment. But if they have questions, of course, they would bring more. Yeah. Okay, so Thank I'm you. just gonna mute you then, mm -hmm. and. Allison, do you have another question? Uh, sure. I'd love to just know what my guides would, would like to show me, share with me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know the movie Harvey with Jimmy Stewart, The Invisible oh, Rabbit? Oh, The Rabbit, yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I mean a large stuffed rabbit but it's it's like a human in a rabbit suit is what it looks like but it's really tall uh-huh like probably six two <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> kind of goofy um i don't know you might want to look up the symbolism of rabbits unless it means something to you specifically but it feels like it's a message to you to bring that feeling of playfulness to your communication work because okay. if you do that, you will be in an energetic space where more will come through. Because, you know, we tend to go to these things with a very serious attitude, right? This is serious business. We're going and we're getting very deep messages from people. But at the soul level, there's more playfulness. Mm -hmm. And if we can lighten up and step into that lighter energy, and boy, this is a theme today, right? Mm -hmm. But if we step into that lighter energy, then we shift so that we're more receptive to what's coming through. So it's the difference between resisting and allowing, Allison. That's what I'm getting. So when you go to your communication work with an energy of being open and playful and just happy and zen, you will allow so much more to come through. The message will be deeper. There will be more layers to it. But if you go to it, like somebody comes to you and my dog is missing and I'm afraid he's dead. And can you help me find my dog? That's heavy energy, right? Mm -hmm. So if you go to your work with that heaviness instead of the lightness. It's going to be like you're having to slog through the muck to get the message. It's going to be so much harder. So if instead, before you go to get the message, you take a moment to ground yourself and slough off all of that heaviness. And it's like, oh, I'm seeing a picture of you like unzipping your skin suit and taking it off. You know, kind of like they did in Cocoon, right? And okay, they step forward yeah. with that soul energy self. And when you do that, now you've removed the layers that are blocking. And mm -hmm. so you will be more open to receiving the message. How does that feel? Yeah, it, it feels, it feels perfect. And I love that the lighten up came in. I, um, January 2nd, I, uh, I lost my heart and soul dog. Oh, I'm sorry. Suddenly. And thank you. Um, his message to me a couple of days ago was to lighten up. And when I hear those words, wherever they may be, 
that it will be Andy, you know, speaking, speaking to me and reminding me to lighten up. So, um, yeah, I, I love hearing that. And it makes a lot of sense to um, unzip, I, very visual. I love that visual. Mm -hmm. to so now I wonder, cover. was it Andy in the rabbit suit? Mm. Oh, it certainly could be because he is so playful and joyous and a little kind of a, a trickster. Okay. Uh, totally fits his personality. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that is so yeah, cool. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. Could absolutely be. I'll have to check in with that a little bit more. Yeah. Oh, yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, it makes a lot of sense. It's beautiful. Awesome. Okay. So I'm going to mute you and then we're going to go back around to Mark. Um, just for everybody, whenever these messages come through and there's symbolism like the rabbit, and even the movie Harvey, maybe there's something there. What I recommend is go Google it and look up everything you can find on it because in that symbolism, very often there's a deeper message. And they don't give it to us directly. It's almost like they want us to work for it because there's some purpose to doing that rather than just having it spoon fed. It's important for us to work a little harder and dig. Like I did a reading for this lady who was very unhappy and lacking um, clarity about what she should do with herself. And very strangely, I'm seeing Beethoven sitting at this piano playing Rachmaninoff. And it's like, well, that's kind of a weird thing. It's weird that I even knew that that's what it was. But so later on, as I dug into the message, what I found was there was a time when Rachmaninoff got scoffed by the critics and he was very sensitive. And because of that, he stopped playing his own music for a while, which is tragic, right? And so that juxtaposition of Beethoven playing Rachmaninoff was the clue that I needed to look for to get that deeper message to help her understand. Because for her, it was all about hiding parts of herself. And it was helping her reconnect with her love for music and to get back into doing music again. And she did start doing that, although in fits and starts, but when she did it, it shifted her energy and she was in a better place to attract what it was she wanted to create. So that's why I say when these symbols come through, go research the heck out of them because it took me quite a bit of searching to find that really obscure message about Rachmaninoff. And I don't know why Beethoven was there other than just it was a figure that I recognized from movies and it was just a clue that was provided because it was more about Rachmaninoff. But yeah, I hope that makes sense anyway. So Art, are yes. you still with us? I'm here. Okay, it looked like you were snoozing there. No. The other day I was doing a class and it was really quiet and peaceful and I'm calling on one of the participants and it really looks like he's asleep. And I thought, well, maybe he's just closing his eyes and listening. He was really asleep. <laughs> so you never know. Sometimes this energy can be so calming and so peaceful that it can just carry you away. And if it does, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Just very funny. So with that art, what would you like to ask? Well, my most powerful teaching story came to me through a series of events about an inmate in a Nazi concentration camp that actually thrived. And when I looked up the story in two different books, they only told what the inmate did. It didn't say how he was able to do it. And that came to me and I'm wondering, and I wrote it all down and now I have it in a two part story. And it's the most powerful teaching story I have ever heard. And I wanted to know if my guides were involved in giving me the information as to put down as to how it happened. And if not, is it correct what I put down? Because my guts tell me it has to be correct. You know, it can't be anything else but what I said. So, but I want to check it out with some higher powers, if you will. Okay. Is there a name? Up? Do you have a name for it? Did you say? Wild Bill Cody. Okay.
<laughs> I've seen uh, three archangels standing there doing this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and this needs to be made into a movie, and what we just did here needs to be made into the movie because it's telling us there's there are all of these channels that we can use to get closer to who we really are and the love that needs to be expressed. What this guy did was he watched his entire family machine gunned to death. And he said, I begged to die with them. And the Germans kept me alive because he could speak seven languages. And he said, I decided right then and there that no matter how long I live, I am going to love everybody I came in contact with. And they found him six years later in this concentration camp and he looked like he'd been there a week. Everybody in that concentration camp loved him and he was full of energy. And it only could have come from complete unconditional love, even for these people that just killed his family. That's the only thing that could have happened. And somebody else gave me a little bit of a hint that maybe Jesus was involved in a little bit of this because they thought they saw this person in another life that was connected with Jesus somehow. And in one of my visions, I was a soldier a Roman soldier standing with a spear at night and off in the distance, somebody was coming to me and I recognized that it was Jesus and I ran, dropped my sword and embraced him. So I'm thinking that all of these things have to be connected, that these things need to be brought out. What it sounds like is you're having spontaneous memories of past lives. So for whatever reason, your guides are showing those to you to help you. And I get them myself sometimes in meditation. I don't ask for them because we don't need to know about all those past lives unless it's something that will help us in the present because we can't change the past. It's all right. about moving forward and being empowered and, and living this amazing life. So if they're showing it to you, there's something that you're to learn from it. Do you feel that you have learned it or do you feel there's something else still waiting to come through? Mm, I don't, I guess I don't understand the question. I, I, I'm, I'm being led from one more advanced teacher to the next and I'm able to take what the seemingly complex and make it easy to understand and also explain it in three or four different ways because Different people need to hear something a different way before they say, aha, I got it. So I think it's involved with that. Oh, you just froze again, Art. Can you say that last part again? Uh, oh. Um, just the last sentence. Okay, I think I got it. In, that's what it's involved with. It's a continuing training so that, ah, uh, I got this, okay. When I see the person in front of me that needs an answer, I can be able to tell it to them in a way that they will get it, not in a way that will go over their heads. So the, the training continues and, I, and, I'm, and they're, they're helping me, they're guiding me. Okay, so now I'm not sure what the question is. Oh. Well, you, you had said, I went back to the original question and you said you saw three. Would you explain that again? You thought so you saw three. Oh, you were asking whether you should, um, you were asking if you were on the right path with what you were, oh, if it was story was true, that's what it was. Right. Whether it was true what you received. Yeah, and you said the you know, Very enthusiastically. Things. Yeah. And three's important, Art. They, because when numbers show up, they're important. Um, so three could be a symbol for you, for Jesus, because that's one of the numbers associated with Jesus, and that's important to you, you said. So that could be the reason that it was three. But yeah, I'm just getting that, yeah, you're on the right track, keep going. And yes, you are getting all of this assistance, and it's okay to even ask for more if you want more. But, oh, okay, so now I just got 
what you need to get art is it's okay to go at your own pace. Don't feel like you have to go at breakneck speed. Right. Right. Because this is a process that can't be rushed. It really needs to unfold in its own time and pieces that you need will be coming as you go. It's almost like you're, you're going along this track and as you go, you're picking up puzzle pieces off the side of the road and adding them to it until you get your great picture, right? Right, yeah. And that's why you can't rush it because all the pieces aren't there yet. You're assembling the whole. Yes. And don't worry about time. I, I'm feeling like there's a, a worry about running out of time. And they're saying, no, you've got all the time you need. If you keep focusing on that, you will cause that to be true. So if you could affirm for yourself that you have more than enough time to do everything you need to do, okay. that would be really helpful. As to whether or not it becomes a movie, that's up to you. It's your creation. What do you want to do with it? I think it needs to be done by somebody like Spielberg because I think it's a more powerful story than Schindler's List and The Zookeeper's Wife. It has that kind of energy behind it. And I, and I know how to embellish it, not embellish it, that's not the right word, enhance it with other things to bring it into, to make it extremely powerful, an extremely powerful movie. Because it ties in, there's another story that I will tie into it, and that is when Abraham Hicks is asked whether Hitler went to hell, and Abraham explains, no, Hitler didn't go to hell. He does the same thing everybody does. He goes back into pure consciousness, and that's what we all do. We go back into pure consciousness because that's the other thing that mankind is worried about. Oh, you know, I'm so bad. I'm going to hell. Well, no, you're not. And so t by tying the two of these things together, you show what this remarkable man did in, in the face of utter, utter madness. He turned it into unconditional love. So those two messages tied together, humanity needs to hear that. So what I just got for you are, you know how Abraham is always saying we create our own reality. Exactly. This man in that moment, in that concentration camp, was creating his own reality. He wasn't seeing what everybody else was seeing. Exactly. He was seeing something entirely different, and that sustained him. And we know that there are enlightened beings in this world who can live on air. Yes. So he was able to tap into that divine source of nourishment and create that reality for himself that allowed him to come through that. And as you were telling that story, it reminds me so much of Ho'oponopono. Yes. And I don't know if it had even been created back then, had it? Not to my knowledge, but I told somebody, that I think, that the story is the greatest Ho'oponopono I ever heard of. Yeah. So you know how divine inspiration comes to more than one person at a time? Yes. So most likely he got it, but he wasn't in a place where he wanted to take that and teach it to people. He used it for his purposes, and of course, it now inspires in the book. But then somebody else did take it and run with it and used it. So, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Okay. So, to me, that feels like what he was doing. It was Ho'oponopono, and he used that to create that reality. Because to be in that situation and not have some negative feelings towards the oppressors is miraculous. Yes. And so your comments that Jesus or some other being was there helping him, absolutely. In fact, that's true for all of us. They're always with us, and we can call on them whenever we need their help. In fact, I was just telling somebody the other day, it just hit me. This has been a year of more awareness and awakening, and just hit me, you know, I don't really pray anymore. I don't feel a need to because I'm constantly communicating with all of these guides and, and whoever wants to come through. And so it's, it's like a constant stream of prayer and it's just a thought away. And exactly. so there's no need to actually get into official prayer. And so that's probably what he was doing. He was in that constant stream of consciousness connected yeah. to 
his team and they helped him through it. Right. Because every thought we have is a prayer and it's answered. We, you know, we just don't know, you know, we have so many, we have 60 to 70,000 thoughts a day and not all, not many of them come into our consciousness. And each one of those is a little prayer and and there's a response. As you know, Abraham teaches something along those lines about holding a thought for more than six seconds. If you can, if you have a a thought there and it's gone in six seconds or less, then it doesn't cause a, a negative effect to come back from it. And so you just let it glance. It's like a, oh, I need to change directions. So you feel a little anger, nope, that's not, and you're back to feeling love. Then then there's, but when you dwell on it, that's when the energy builds. So you don't want to dwell on it. You just want to use it as, okay, I li- went a little off path, time to get back on the path. Sure, because what you focus on expands, good or bad. Yeah. Yeah, I always teach people, no matter how bad it is, look for that tiny little kernel of a spark of hope, something good, and hold on to that and focus on it, and it will expand, and pretty soon that dark will go away. Right. But if you focus on the dark, you're just going to get more dark. It reminds me of Abraham when he says, um, well, Abraham, we've just jumped out of a plane. What do we do? And Abraham's response is, well, don't worry. It'll be over in a minute. <laughs> You'll be back in the light. Yeah, at that point, you're kind of out of options. Awesome. Okay, well, I'm going to see if Mark has another question for us. Mark, are you there? Uh, He must have stepped out of the room. Okay, well, I'm going to unmute you, Allison, to see if you have anything else, because I want to give Mark a chance to come back. How can I maybe uh, how can I work with my guides a bit more um, throughout the day and um, yeah feel um, feel supported by them I guess um, I do I mean I do call on them although I um, I call on just a few uh, just a few that I'm aware of I guess. Um, so the Akashic Records is, is new to me. And yeah, I don't know. I just any, anything else, um, you know, a, a way that I can utilize this maybe in my daily life and in my in growing my business? The Akashic Records, you mean? Yes, I think so. Yeah. Well, when you read the book, you'll get a lot there. Okay. There is a bonus that comes with the book, so be sure you get that. There's a link both in the front and the back. Uh-huh. Metatron, who is the overseer of the Akasha, uh-huh. he gave me a special meditation to go with the book. And it's, it's really interesting. He called it to restore your soul to default settings. Uh, okay. So it's like all the crap that we've picked up while we've been in the third dimension. Uh-huh. Let that fall away. And restore to default so that you can move forward empowered. Mm-hmm. And then when you do that, then there's an access prayer that you can use to get into the Akasha. And okay. people think it's this big mysterious thing, and it's really not. I mean, you could simply go into meditation and you could ask for access to your records. Hmm. And then you just kind of sit there and wait to see what comes. Okay. Does it tell me something um, about a possible past life um like i know that andy and i were connected in a in at least one lifetime if not many many more but i i'm not sure how to dive into that a little bit deeper or how to find out more information uh about that Is so that you have something that they help with yeah absolutely are you they will show you from past lives whatever it is you need to help you right now. It's not okay. like you can go back and see this whole life, right? Uh-huh. You only get what you need because otherwise we could get distracted going uh-huh. back and digging into all that that was before. Uh-huh. That won't help us. So past life regression does that 
that's yeah. kind of for curiosity's sake to get the details. But with mm -hmm. the records, your guides give you what you need right now. So okay. if you were to go to your records and ask, can you show me the connections I've had with Andy in the past? Uh -huh. they, they may show you nothing. They may show you a whole bunch or just a little. It depends on what you need. Okay. okay. But you can absolutely get it. Sure. So from what I've experienced, if they did show you something, it would be because it was connected to a lesson that you're trying to learn right now. Okay. So yes, you and Andy were together and this happened. And now you can see, oh my gosh, I'm having that same situation right now. Mm -hmm. and so by seeing what happened then, it helps you to understand now. And then you can release it energetically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like okay. I worked with this young woman not long ago who had been raped. And I don't know why she thought of coming to the Akasha for help, but she did. And so I went to her records and they showed me that when she was the same age that she is right now, several past lives ago, she had been raped pretty brutally. And it was a time where it wasn't accepted. And she was living at home because she was a young woman and her family totally shunned her. So it just broke her spirit. And what she ended up doing was shutting herself away in her room. And after two weeks, she killed herself because her life was over. There was nothing for her. So by he seeing and understanding what happened in the past, she was able to contrast that to where she is now and to see that, oh, when it happened before, she was very disempowered and had no choices other than death. Now she's much more empowered but she still had the resonance of that victim energy, which was just enough to attract this rape. But in this case, it was as gentle as it can be, as untraumatic as it can be. And it still was rape, and she still had to deal with it. But seeing that contrast and understanding why it happened to her now, because she needed to resolve that old energy. Uh -huh. so she had this experience, and it was like, before my eyes, she transformed. Just by hearing the story, it shifted her, and she was able to process that, and now it's like nothing happened. Mm -hmm. So that would be a purpose that they would show you a past life. Sure, okay. And like in the book you'll read, um, I think I put this in there, they showed me one time just a little snippet of my death. It was during, I, it was like the Salem witch trials, and I was on a dunking stool going in the water. So they drowned me for being a witch. And that message was all about helping me to understand that being a light worker, most of us have been light workers in many lifetimes. And because of that, we've been killed, we've been tortured, we've been exiled, all kinds of bad things have happened to us. So we come forward into this lifetime, we're light workers, but we're hiding, we're invisible because it's dangerous to be a light worker. That's the message we've learned after multiple lifetimes. So part of our journey in this lifetime is to learn that, to come to terms with it, and to throw off that cloak of invisibility so that we can be our authentic selves. Right, ah, okay. Yeah, so now you see why it's so important to use your Akashic Records, because they're a tool, yeah. and they're for your empowerment. And if we don't know about them, we can't use them. So that's what the book is all about, to help people understand, you got this. You should be using it. It will help you. Yeah. Okay. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So for you, moving forward, using the Akashic Records to do your animal communication, I think will open up so much more expansiveness for you, more dimensions, and wow. it will be a richer experience for you and your clients. Yeah. Wow. Oh, that's thrilling. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That wonderful? It is. Yes, yes. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you're okay. so welcome. Thank you very so, much. Let's just see if Mark came back. Mark, I'm here. Hey, all right. So did you have another question? No, not right now. Okay. I'm well, good. I'm just going to pause and do a slight commercial. I wanted to share with you that I'm going to be offering my course rock your life in a 
couple of weeks, I forget the exact date, said a couple of weeks on Wednesdays, this time at noon. And what it's all about is we come together in a group to help lift each other up and to get past the obstacles that are blocking our progress because we all have them, right? Many of us are dealing with repeating patterns in our lives from past lives. So before the class, I look up everybody's divine gift because I want you to know how your soul is wired. So we start from there. I explain to you what your divine gift is, how you were built to function in the world, because when you're conscious of your gift, then you can use it purposefully to find empowerment and to create whatever it is you want to create. So once you know your gift, then we look at what's going on in your life. Where are you blocked? Let's name that obstacle, whatever it is. Sometimes it's something traumatic from childhood. Sometimes it's karmic, and we'll find out what it is if that's true. But what's blocking you? We're going to name it and just put the light on it, bring it into the light, and transmute it. So you name it and you claim it. Now let's, let's find out why it's there. Is there a connection to a past life so we can dissolve that connection? Is there something that you're continuing to do that's perpetuating it in your life so that we can help you see that pattern and stop doing it? So you've named it and you claimed it. Then we're going to reframe it. Using your gifts, we explore how you use those gifts to obliterate those obstacles and move forward so that now you can step into that empowered place to create whatever you want because that's what your soul came here to do. I tell people, if you're Star Trek fans, you'll get this. The prime directive for all of us is to come here and experience higher consciousness and expansion and to find what feeds your soul. And if you do those two things, everything else works out. Because when you find what feeds your soul and you do that, life gets so much easier. And that's why I'm so passionate about sharing with people about their gifts, because when you know your gift, that helps you to figure out what feeds your soul. Because it's understanding how to use your gift and then deciding what you're going to do with it. That's your soul purpose. We tend to think that soul purpose is, oh, I should be a doctor, or I should be a lawyer, or you know, I should feed the homeless. And that's not what soul purpose is all about, because what all of those things have in common is should. None of us came here to be shoulded on. We came here to have higher consciousness and to feed our soul. So we get to decide. And that's what was missing from all of those lessons that we were taught from way back when. We got all this obligation dumped on us. And many of us have been carrying those things around like these 10 ton weights on our backs. That's not what our life was for. And that's preventing us from actually living our purpose. So that's why we start with what is your gift. And then throughout the course, we meet four times. Throughout the course, we're always coming back around to what are the limiting beliefs that are stopping you from moving forward? And how can you use your gift to get past that? It's so one of the big things that happens for us is that so many of us are put upon with I can't. And what I want you to know is I can't needs to be taken out of your language. Because if you're the river, and you're flowing downstream, and you encounter a rock, what do you do? You don't stop and say, Oh, well, I guess my life is over. I can't go around this rock. No, the river is wise. And the river knows all it has to do is move to the side, left or right, sometimes even over. And it can get past that obstacle, that rock, and then get right back to flow in the way it was designed to flow. So when we allow I can't to come in, it's like we hit that rock and we stopped. What we need to understand is that our souls have the ability to step to the side and go around those obstacles and keep flowing because that's what we were designed to do. So those are just some of the things that we're going to work on in this course. Now, we do it, as I said, for four weeks, and I have priced it at $77 for the four weeks, which is a fabulous bargain if you know what these courses do. And the reason it's 77 is really important because that is a number that's symbolic of new beginnings and moving forward and embracing your power. So I wanted to use that angel number 
to bring in more power to the course. I've taught it twice now, and it's remarkable. I learn when I teach, which we all do, but it, it is phenomenal to watch the transformation in the people from week one to week three, because the first three weeks, that's the name it, claim it, reframe it. The fourth week is really a celebration. We don't even need it, because the truth about the Akashic Records is when you use them as the tool they were designed for, you can shift really quickly. You don't need to go through years of therapy. It is remarkable you, because you get to the core of the problem and you obliterate it with that understanding, that knowledge, you've learned the lesson and now you move forward and the way is clear to flow and to create what you want and to find your bliss. And I can tell you honestly from doing this work for the last five years now, I've gotten to this place of true Zen where I just feel blissful most days without really even working at it. it. It just happens. And that doesn't mean that there aren't problems, that there aren't challenges. It just means that when you shift into this way of being and you connect to your divine gifts and to your records, challenges just aren't that big of a deal because you know how to work out and get around them using your gifts. And it's like life becomes more magical. I hate to call it magical because that has weird connotations, but it feels magical. So that's what we'll be doing in this course. So I will send you all an email with the details if you'd like to join me. That will be starting in two weeks. I forget the date, but it's, it's two weeks. So let's go back and see if anybody else has anything they want to add. Just wave, your, wave at me or raise your hand if you, you want to comment or ask questions. Okay, gotcha, Allison. Go ahead. So I was going to say thank you so much. This was oh. enlightening. I loved it. So I'm so nice. glad. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else questions? Art? Uh, just to say amen and thank you. I... Oh, you're welcome. I'm so glad we got to meet face to face. It was wonderful. Yeah. All right, I'll unmute you, Mark, before we wrap. Did yeah. you have anything? No, no. Thank you for this. It was You're so fascinating. Well. Yeah. Yeah, it was a joy. It, it's mm. always a delight to share mm. the messages and the power from the Akasha because all this love just comes pouring through, and mm. I get to experience it as I'm sharing it with you, which is really mm. fabulous. So thank you all for mm. being here. I really appreciate it. My apologies for the tech glitches, but, oh, bless you for showing up anyway. So I hope to see you again soon. Come to my Facebook page if you've got questions, because we do have dialogue going there. And I'm also posting inspirational messages every day that are downloads from the Akasha. So they're really special. And that's all there for you. All right. So thank you again. And we'll see thank you. you. Bye. Bye-bye.